infinite complacency. People went to and fro of the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, binning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. On this edition of Into the Fray, I welcome on listener Donald. He got in touch with me via email about some personal experiences. And Donald, I understand that you haven't really shared these experiences with a whole lot of people. So I am I'm very much looking forward to hearing all the details of all of these occurrences. And thank you for being here, of course. Thank you for your time today and for reaching out. Yeah, not a problem. So why don't we start at the beginning, if that's okay with you, because I know that you have had occurrences since you were really quite young, correct? Uh, yeah, I'd say we moved. My dad was in the Air Force till I was in third grade. I think I was partly through third, so that's when we moved back to Pennsylvania. I would say maybe a year after we moved back, so like fourth grade-ish, I was probably like nine or ten that um, things started happening. You actually mentioned in the email that right when you got to this house in PA, it kind of felt weird. It had a an odd sensation about it, at least to you. And, and I would like to follow up with a, a question, who, who else felt that way? But you said beyond the uneasiness, that was one thing. But then about a year later, you guys started a little bit of construction, a little bit of remodeling, which, as we've heard before, can kind of kick activity up. And it seems that's exactly what happened at this house. So, yeah, that first part was you felt uneasy, but did everybody agree on that? I think like the way the house was set up, it was like the living room when you walked in and then the kitchen in the back. And then there were stairs right in the middle of the house. So you walk up the stairs to the left was all, me and both of my brothers all slept in the same room when we first moved in. And my parents slept across the hall. I felt like every kind of weird feeling happened towards our end of the house. And that was where they ended up doing most of the construction. I definitely had it. And I think my my middle brother, who's two years younger than me, kind of had a weird feeling. But I feel like my youngest brother, he was a couple years younger than us. So I don't think he kind of caught on to that stuff as much well it's probably good for him considering that some of the things that you put in your email right wasn't always exactly pleasant stuff and people like to sleep sleep is great so um yes and on top of that this remodel they elected to edit the stairs to the attic right so let's talk about that a little bit well what it was is they never Nobody ever actually put stairs in the attic the way it was originally set. It just had like the, uh, you know, the thing in the ceiling that you could move to get up into the attic. But they wanted, they were built, you know, putting the steps in because they wanted to turn it into a possible extra room for one of us. Yeah, when that stuff started happening, that that wasn't going to be a room for me. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> no, no, that wouldn't be no uh, drawing the short straw. It's like none of us are drawing straws. No one is staying up in in the attic. So yeah, let's talk about what started to go down. And at what point during the addition of the stairs did activity start? Was this an immediate thing that, that went down? I mean, I feel like it was, it was definitely fairly soon. I'm thinking the steps just got like the base steps, like just like the steps that the, the workers used to get up and down to the mm. attic. Once those were up, that's when stuff started to kick up. We'd, uh, you know, our parents would say goodnight to us. You know, we'd lay down and you could just hear it sounded like heavy stomping going from one side of the attic to the other. 
and just back and forth. And it sounded like they were not just normal steps, but they were like stomping, like it was somebody that was walking around angry. Quite unnerving. So you guys, all three of you guys are in this room. What is the conversation between you guys when this is had just begun? My littlest brother, he kind of slept through everything, so he, he avoided it. <laughs> right. But me and my middle brother, he was in a bunk bed, so he was closer to the ceiling than I was. So, yeah, we were both a little uh, creeped out. We would just kind of uh, keep talking to each other until we uh, calmed down enough to go to sleep. And what about your parents? Did did you tell them this was going on? And if you did, did you ever call them in when it was going on? Did they ever get to hear it? I'm pretty sure we did mention it a few times. But my dad's very, uh, no go with that kind of stuff. He's like, you know, none of that uh, paranormal or any of that. He's very straightforward. So he didn't want to really hear any of that. Was your mom more open to that at all? Uh, yeah, but she was also kind of more nervous about the possibility of something like that she didn't you know want the idea that there's something creepy going on in our house right but yeah there were there were plenty of times that she would uh sit with us until we fell asleep and then when she did do that the steps never happened it was only when they were in there that's saying a lot about the the interactiveness of whatever that was right the awareness i should say yeah, I'm like all kind of wondering if it was trying to do that to scare us out of that area. Yeah, I wonder if way back in the day, way before you guys, however many owners were there before you guys were there, if there was any other remodeling prior to that. And if, in fact, that part of the house had just been com something completely different. I mean, normally upstairs is bedrooms, but who knows? I mean, I don't really know if much was done in there for a while because there was... When we moved in, it was very dated. It was all 70s wood paneling in every room. And the footsteps, did this occur every night? I, I wouldn't say every night, but I would say at least every every couple nights. And you guys did, in fact, just get to the point where maybe you weren't 100% used to it, but you just would kind of talk each other down and calm down enough to go to sleep, you said. Yeah. And then I feel like after. They finished with all that stuff, the the stomping and all that. I felt like uh, toned down. Mm. But, I mean, it still kind of had that eerie feeling going on. Oh, that's okay. That that is interesting. Then that yeah. So once the construction's done, it's like okay, it's it's fine now. I don't need to keep the kids up every third night for whatever reason they were or it whatever we're calling it. Whatever reason I was doing it, just decided hey construction's done like time to tap out that's kind of strange of course that wasn't the only thing that occurred and i'm sure that looking back at least for me just reading the email this next thing that was in the email at least was quite the graduation from hearing heavy footfalls or stomping in the attic right oh yes that was probably one of the scariest things i've ever uh, seen so where it was on the right side of the, so my bed was on the far right side of the room and the stairs to the attic were across on the same side of the room. And then to the left was the, was the walkway that led to the stairs. And I'd say not right at the doorway, but a little to the right of the doorway to the hall, there was a lady standing there. The most I can describe it as is, is it looked like she almost had like a, I want to say like a dress you'd see on like I Love Lucy or something. It was definitely like one of those older like 50s style dresses. And she just had this look like, what are you doing here? Like, you, you know, you don't need to be here. And I kind of describe it like if you ever watch the movie Matilda. Principal Miss Trunchbull. Mm -mm. She had that look on her face. Oh, like, gosh. she's a worm. What are you doing in my house? Yeah, that's not a good look. I wouldn't want to get that look as a kid. <laughs> not from Miss no. Miss uh, the Miss Trunchbull look alike. So did she did she ever move at all? Oh, she just stared. Just like, you know, a glare at me. 
And I, you know, I just, I was froze. I just stared back at her for, I don't even know how long I must have been. I, I mean, I'm sure it felt like hours to me, but it was probably for minutes. And did you guys have um nightlight or hallway light? Like, was she illuminated at all? I mean, not from within or anything. Just did you see her quite well? I didn't see her face fully. I definitely felt like I saw the dress a little bit better. You know, it had that. I don't know what you call it, like an apron skirt that came out and it was blue in color. And her hair, I think, was um, brownish color. But I can't really remember the face. I don't know if I kind of uh, zoned it out so I didn't have to remember it. Right. Probably what I would have done, to be honest with you. Especially if you kind of, you, I mean, maybe you even felt that look more than you even saw it. I mean, that's just conjecture, but you can feel stares like that from people. Yeah. So. Yeah, it definitely was that kind of feeling. I mean, were you trying to get to sleep and then you saw her? Or did you, like, if you woke up, I wonder what woke you up. Maybe you did feel that stare or something. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was. Definitely asleep. Uh, yeah, I feel like I felt eyes on me. And that's what woke me up. And you were obviously the only one to to see her, right? Uh, your other brothers are asleep. The younger one is definitely usually asleep, you said. And your middle brother was asleep at this time. Yeah, and I think as far as I know, I don't know if he'd be able to see her. Because where she was standing is right in, right in front of their bed. Mm, okay. So I kind of saw her like right, you know, like at an angle where their bed would be right behind it, I should say. And you only saw her the one time? Yeah, just that one time. And that was like right after all the work was done. So I don't know if it was kind of like a last like, like, why did you do this kind of thing? Yeah, either that or that was the best way that she knew how to say, okay, we're going to stop with the stomping, even though her... Her look didn't seem very friendly, did it? Not at all. <laughs> no. Donald, have you thought about why you, why, why, why did you see her and not somebody else? That's a fair question. I don't know. I don't know if it was because I noticed the things more and I was the oldest out of the kids. So I'm wondering if. They thought, oh, like, he'll kind of understand what's going on. Now, of course, I have questions about, did you ever find out any tie-ins with her and the house and or her and the land or anything that would explain the ghostly uh, stomping, stompings? But I know that in your email, you mentioned other ghostly experiences through your teenage years. Did all those occur in the same house or is that a different house? Yeah, so that was the weird thing. When I was I'm trying to think, I think it was like ninth or 10th grade, we moved into a new house in a development. That was where some other really creepy stuff happened. All right, so before we move on there, then I, I, I'll go ahead and ask that. I mean, you were very young, obviously, when you lived in that house in PA and you saw the woman. Did you ever happen across anything or look into anything as far as why she would even be there. It, it's a tough one. And half the time you can't find information like that. I'd say much more than yeah. half the time, but anything on that? I mean, the only thing I know is I do think it was an older couple that lived there before we moved in. And I'm pretty sure they moved to a retirement home before, um, you know, a couple of months before, because they were both getting pretty old. I think their family wanted to, you know, get them in a senior safer. So as far as I know, those are the only ones now, but they were still alive. And when you guys moved in there, was it furnished? I want to say it was partially, it was, I guess what was in there was pretty old. Like there was an mm. old, uh, I can't remember what they call it, like buffet, uh, you know, shelves that you could store like China and stuff in. Yeah. Uh, like a curio cabinet kind of thing, but a big one. Yeah, 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 that kind of thing. Well, then that makes you wonder, is it the house, the land, or uh, an object, right? With some yeah. kind of an attachment. Yeah, something else. Yeah, some kind of energy attached there. And did the footsteps have anything to do with her or those two separate things? 
Yeah, that's that's what I wonder because the footsteps sounded distinctly like, you know, heavy boots. And I'm not saying a woman can't wear boots, but going by, you know, the look of of her and, you know, the, the time period, you know, that wasn't really uh, the style for ladies back then. Well, yeah, let's talk about the uh, the house that you guys moved to in uh, ninth or tenth grade. Nothing really happened there for a little while, but like most teenagers that think they're, uh, you know, cool and can do whatever, I started to, uh, you know, go to graveyards and old creepy buildings and all that. And I think I kind of maybe brought something in with me. Like I kind of had like, you know, weird emotional issues after doing these things. And then at the time I had a, girlfriend not the best girlfriend but we were actually at her house this is when the first thing happened we're sitting there in her living room talking to her mother the way their house is set up they have a uh their pantry um is like shelves that go down their steps to the basement we're sitting there talking and all of a sudden we hear a loud smash coming from the stairs so we go over to the uh, basement steps and look and there's a I think it was a jar of like jam or like preserves or something like that smashed right in the middle of the stairs we look at the shelf where everything was sitting and where this thing was pulled out was behind other cans and it didn't look like anything was moved to get it out so it looked like a, almost like a crane picked it up, pulled it out, and just dropped it on the deck. So that, yeah, that was a little uh, little bit of a shock to the system. And did the mom or the the girlfriend go, oh, this happens sometimes, or was this a shock to them as well? Um, I guess they did have a few things um, in that house. Uh, mom's like half Native American, so she kind of had a lot of the, you know, spiritual stuff going on. She'd always say things like, she had a an old uh like native american chief picture hanging on their wall and she said it would like always you know shift to the side randomly when you weren't looking so you're thinking that maybe something came home from the girlfriend's house to your own home or like the graveyards and all of that i i I think whatever i had going on with me that was connected to me was maybe exacerbating what was going on at their house because they never had anything that serious. Mm, okay. I would say maybe a few months after that, I had this thing where I would work. Um, I used to work at McDonald's, unfortunately. And uh, after I got out of work, I would sit um, down in the living room, watch movies, TV shows, whatever I felt like watching. And the one day, I was watching, I don't know if you ever saw it, but it's that kind of dumb uh, horror movie called Pulse. I have seen that. I had that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I never I never thought it was that scary. But I had went into the garage because we had a uh, extra fridge in the garage that had like, sodas and stuff. So I went in there and grabbed a soda. And I just sat down. It was getting to the part in the movie where the uh, guy jumps off that. I don't know. I don't remember what it was he jumped off of, but he smacked off the ground. Right when in the movie, when he smacked off the ground, I hear the garage door slam shut like super hard. The way the garage is set, it has weather stripping on the bottom of the garage door and on the bottom of the door, like around the outside of the door. So in order for that door to actually physically slam, you would need a lot of force. So did you kind of get up to go investigate that? Or did you sit there and go, okay, oh, just going to keep watching about... Pulse? No, I about peed my pants. Yeah. I, de- I definitely like went over and had a look and was like, what is going on? And of course, I was not watching any more of that movie that night. <sighs> yeah, I don't blame you. Then it, then it was a little creepier at that point, right? 
Oh yeah, that was it. that was the only time I thought that was. Weird. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That helped that movie at that time, but still not not a fun situation for you. So the door slams. Do you get a little break before the next thing, or is it starting to to ramp up? I wouldn't say it's very long. I'd say maybe only a couple of weeks, maybe like two weeks, if that. This is one of the, the creepiest ones I've had. So I drove my grandma gave me her old Plymouth Breeze to uh, drive to work. Um, so one day I'm getting ready. I start driving to work. And as I'm driving, I can hear a loud pounding like in the back of my car. And at first I thought, oh, something's like stuck under my car. Or, like, you know, something's banging in the bottom of the car. So I pulled over and look, there's nothing under the car. Pull back on the road, keep moving again, and the pounding starts even louder. And it sounds like somebody pounding on the inside of my trunk. Like, you know, when like when somebody's real mad and pounding on the door, that's what it sounded like in the back of my car. And so I'm like, well, do I have something in the back of my car that's moving around? So I look, I didn't think I had anything. I look, my trunk's empty. I have no idea where the sound is coming from. I'm like, oh, well, maybe there's something wrong with the car. But I pull out and the sound gets even louder. It sounds like somebody's just trying like everything to get out of that trunk. I just got to a point where I was like, well, whatever it is, I can't do anything about it. So I kind of just tried to ignore it, but it still was so. And I never had that issue again with the car. It never made that noise like that. So I don't know what it was, but. That, that, that actually is a really strange one and done. Uh, a lot of times you hear that, yeah. like myself, you know, you see apparitions or shadow people one and done, but to have that kind of an auditory experience in a car, that's pretty unique. And, and it's a one and done. It didn't even do it later that night when you got off work. So it wasn't a more than likely. It's not a problem with the car. That's just strange. Oh, yeah, that's what, what I wonder, like, why just that one time going to work? That was a couple of weeks later. Did anything strange, uh, of course, you would have probably mentioned this, but, I mean, did you ever think, like, what went on that morning or that, that night before? Did Was there any extra strange energy in the house, anything like that, if, when you think back on it? I mean, I felt like I get, like, weird feelings here and there, but I felt like it was, you know, just whatever was going on at the time. But I didn't feel like there was anything like extra odd going on before like these later experiences. Right. Yeah. Cause it seems like some of it you can kind of, you can pin down. Right. But stuff like that, then you're like, well, what, what in the world was that about? Yeah. No rhyme or reason for it. Right. I'm just assuming because I was getting into stuff I probably shouldn't be getting into. So, and by that, you just mean, like kids do, getting into stuff as far as going to places that you shouldn't go. Like you mentioned going to graveyards, right? So, you had already done something like that several times? Yeah, and, you know, doing, like, the, uh, the Ouija board and, you know, like, the, you know, the, the Wiccan stuff and all that stuff. Not that it ever really worked very well, but we, uh, me and my friends were into doing all that and, I don't think we necessarily went about it the proper way. Or maybe you did, and that's why you were having activity. Unless, again, it might have worked too well. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Now, were you guys doing uh, kind of the darker stuff or like the white white magic, white, you know, yeah, the light side? That I thought was too serious. Like, you know, we did, like, did draw like the pentagrams on our, ourselves and stuff. And like we would do like the lightest feather, stiff as a board thing. And a few other, like, small things, but I don't think it was ever anything too, like, dark. When it came to, and obviously there's there's probably more to come, but did you ever talk out loud and say, hey, what, what's going on here? Why are, you, why are you picking on me? Why are you bothering me? What do you want? Anything like that? I think I might have mentioned, it said something like that after the after the car thing, or maybe during the car thing. Just like knock it the hell off, like I'm just trying to get to work. But I can't necessarily remember what I said. Right. 
Okay, well, that's kind of interesting then, because you, if you said that at that time, and then it was a one and done situation with whatever the hell that was in the trunk, that would be super creepy, by the way. Uh, maybe that actually did work in that case, and that's why it was a one and done. I haven't thought of that, but it could be. During the rest of my teen years, it was most just, you know, more little, like, hearing, hearing little things or, you know, just random little stuff going on in the house. But after I calmed down with stuff, it seemed to uh, die down. But I have had a few more things as I've gotten older. They're a little more benign, though. So, yeah, within three years of each other, both of my grandparents passed away from the same kind of cancer. A little something happened after each of them passed that I think was them kind of letting me know they're okay. And was this grandparents on uh, on the opposite sides of the family or same side? Same side. Mm, okay. Yeah, it was both of my dad's parents. My grandma passed away first. I think she was only like 63. Uh, maybe a week after her uh, funeral. I guess I should preface it with saying that I have sleep apnea, so when I go to bed at night, I have to wear what's called a, ma- a CPAP mask, and you know, it's plugged in the machine. It helps my uh, my sleeping at night. Well, I'm getting uh, my mask on. I'm getting ready to turn the machine on to get ready to go to sleep. All of a sudden, the machine turns on by itself. And when you turn this machine on, when you press the button, turn it on, it makes an audible click. And I heard the click, but I didn't press it. Well, it's kind of cool almost because you're, you're going to bed, you're kind of getting settled in and grandma's like, yeah, okay, let's, let's tuck you in. Let's get you in bed. Right. And like, that's, that seems like a very grandmotherly thing to do. Yeah. And she was always like the, you know, the soft spoken and like super caring type. So I can definitely see her doing something like that. And do you think that going forward that she gave you any more hints besides that one? Well, now, after after my pop-up passed away, I think it might have been something that I got from both of them. Because after he passed away, it was the same thing. Maybe a week after his funeral, we had cleared out his apartment. And, you know, everybody in the family kind of got a few odds and ends you know, from what was left in their apartment. And me and my wife decided uh, we were going to take, it's called an anniversary clock. I don't know if you've heard of it before, but it's basically a clock and it has uh, little uh, things that spin around underneath it. And it's covered in glass. And I guess it's it's for whatever, I don't know what wedding anniversary it was for, but somebody got, gave it to him. And we kind of liked the look, so we grabbed it. So we had it at the house for like, you know, a week or two. Mind you, this thing doesn't ha- hasn't had batteries in it for God knows how long. One day, just out of the blue, and this this is one of the few times my wife was actually there, there for something. The um, moving parts on the bottom of the clock actually started to move on their own. I like to think it was them, like, saying oh like we're good we're you know we're here together like you don't got to worry about us what did your wife say about that i think honestly she pro- i think she cheered up a little bit i mean i don't think she really understood it but you know it definitely gave me a feeling like like you know it's okay like we're okay here you don't worry about us and is she a, a a believer in this stuff, or is she more quite skeptical? Which you can be both, of course. It's good to be both. I'm just yeah, saying. I, I mean, I think she might be a little with certain th- a little skeptical with certain things, but I think she's definitely open to the idea of things. But she's never really, other than that, she's never had any kind of experience. So I think that's kind of part of it, right? No, it's, I think it's always wonderful to hear when the, the grandparents come back and kind of give that nod, like, yeah, we're, like you said, we're, we're good. Everything's okay. And, and probably a stamp that you guys took the anniversary clock and they like that. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe they, that's who they wanted to have it. I don't know. Right. And again, it, it was only that one time. It didn't, it didn't move again after that. No, that's, that's the weird thing. It's always just the one time. 
Yeah, you'd think if it was some kind of a weird malfunction, much like the car situation, that it would occur again. But it just doesn't seem to do that. So. Well, yeah, because I, you know, I looked at it because at first I didn't realize that the thing didn't have. Like I thought, oh, it might have old batteries in it, but I looked in there, there was no batteries in it whatsoever. So there's nothing that should be making this thing move from that. And on top of it, there's a glass dome over it. So it's not like the wind can hit anything and make it move that way. Right. Well, what about these but, uh, synchronicities? Yeah, so I don't really, you know, know. I'm kind of new to the whole idea myself, but it's just little things that have happened, you know, in in recent years that lead you to question certain things. I The one big one that happened was my son had this, uh, well, I think he still has it somewhere. It's a uh, like 50 in one, like Atari, like that it has the controller and like 50 games attached to it. So one day we're just, you know, fiddling around with it and playing through games. And we got on this one called Adventure. And it's basically just a giant maze that you're supposed to find your way out of. So, you know, I'm playing the game. I do all this stuff. I end up at this dead end and go end up somehow going back to the beginning. And when I got back to the beginning, there was a bunch of print on the screen that said adventure created by, you know, whoever 1970 or 80, whatever. So, oh, that's pretty cool. But this is, that wasn't where it got weird. Where it got weird was I think maybe two or three days later, this was uh, when ready player one came out. The whole premise of the last challenge on that was that, He plays this game called Adventure. Instead of actually completing the game, you're supposed to find this hidden thing that was the first Easter egg in any game that the guy snuck in his name and the title of the game and all that. And the whole premise was it saying, oh, like it's not about finishing, but about the adventure along the way of finding things. It was just so weird that this happened two days after we played this. And mind you, I've never played that Atari game before or since. So what is the likelihood that two days after I do that exact thing, that pops up in that movie? That very same message. Yep. About about the thing. Yeah, that is weird timing. Yeah, and that that I was able to randomly do that, you're not even trying, and then the, it pops up in the movie. Like, even it just blew my mind. And my kid's sitting next to me, and he's like, "Didn't we just do that?" I'm yeah, like, I think we did. He put that together too. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. Yeah, especially since there's not really been a movie quite like Ready Player One, right? That tries to capture the nostalgia of some of us and when we grew up playing games like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that that was that was an eye opening experience. And then you know we've had uh, I've had you know a few other odd and end things where just be you know talking about something like I forget what it was. I think me and my wife were talking about Coldplay of all things, and I was saying how my favorite song by them is uh, "Fix You," just randomly talking about it, and then later the same day. We're watching uh, Money Heist on Netflix. The end of the episode, what song comes on but Fix You by Coldplay. That is a great song, by the way. Yes, it is. Did your wife even kind of go, hey, we were just talking about that? Well, she did. Wait, this is what a song you were just talking about, right? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, that's so weird. I'm like, I know. Yeah, I love when stuff like that happens because then you're kind of going, maybe... Maybe Elon's right. Maybe we do live in the Matrix. I don't know. (laughs) Right? Like, is there something somewhere that's like, oh, yeah, I hear you. I mean, considering that Google seems to always be listening on our phones and Alexa's listening to us, who knows? But, I mean, that's obviously what you're saying is kind of on a different scale uh, and situation. But, um, yeah, I 
I love when stuff like that happens because it is very, very strange. And you're like going, what are the chances of the timing of these things? Yeah. Yeah, I think the only other there was, there was a, a big weird one that I had somewhat recently. It's kind of mundane, but it's funny at the same time. So at my work, I have a warehouse that we have a bunch of old stuff at. We were trying to get rid of this forklift. It was just like this huge, old, like hydraulic, 10,000 pound forklift. And so we go over to the warehouse because the guys, uh, this guy wants to uh, buy it from us. And, you know, we had to talk to him about, you know, how they, you know, how they would come and get it and all that. So we do that, you know, and we set, set up a time uh, for him to come get it. And then literally later that same day, a guy, comes from the fork the person that works on the forklifts we have at work and was asking about the forklift we were just getting ready to sell and mind you forklifts aren't in an everyday conversation i'd imagine not no so it's like well what how what's the likelihood that the same day we're talking about selling this forklift that the guy that formerly worked on the forklift is going to come and ask about it did everyone kind of look around like, um, what? what? <laughs> yeah, we both kind of, we all kind of did it double take because yeah. I didn't know who at first. My boss was like, that's the guy that used to work on the forklifts. So I was like really tripped out. <laughs> it's weird. That's so weird. See, the Matrix, man. I'll tell you what. You know? Does that mean if we put it out there about like, oh, I could use 10 grand by tomorrow. I don't know. Just cause like, but it never seems to work like that. It's really not fair. You know? No, it's when you don't expect it to. It's like, Oh yeah. Here it, are we talking, talking about a forklift. Here's a yeah, forklift. Just so random. Like you're as much as I love cold play. I mean, I'd rather just have a little extra cash or, you know, I, I, uh, yeah, a, a kitchen right. full of groceries. I just didn't feel like going to the grocery store that day, whatever, you know, whatever it might be, but that's all right. We'll take the cold play. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, other than that, I didn't feel like a whole lot's happened. Uh, my son did say something recently about something that he noticed. I don't know if he wants to talk about it or wants me to mention it. Do you want me to tell? What? About your crow thing. Oh, yeah, that is weird. Do you want to talk? No, you can't. Oh, Okay. No, he's too busy playing his video game. <laughs> I don't. Bl- I don't blame him. I yeah. I you know what? I still have my. Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo and the original Nintendo, and they all work. Like, and all the games still work. It's amazing. They don't make stuff like that anymore. My dad threw them away, and I was so mad. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, I was like, he's like, what? They're old. I'm like, yeah, but they're worth money now. Yeah, and they, they would have still worked, I got to tell you. Oh, no, Dad. <laughs> got to blow off the cartridges. <laughs> That's right. It's, yeah. That's all you need no. to do. <laughs> Yeah, kids now don't realize the hardships of old video games. <laughs> no, no, we we like had to jerry rig them every single time. You're like, you're like, just blow on it harder. It'll it'll definitely work, and they always did. This 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 direction or this many times. <laughs> yeah, you'd get like the screen of death, and you go, all right, pull it back out, do it again. Let's you know. This one is great combat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, his thing was. So, yeah, I think we might have been driving to uh, this place, like, maybe 20 minutes away from us. It uh, has, like, a mini golf and, like, go-karts and all all that stuff. He randomly just goes, well, that's weird. And I'm like, well, like, well, what's weird? And he's like, I swear I just saw a crow hit the window of a barn, but I never saw it fall, and the window didn't break. Mm. Like, it just... Was there one second and gone the next. Okay, that is really weird. Yeah. Well, because, I mean, a cr- like also a crow is a, I mean, that's a, that's a big bird. Like, blow hawks and falcons and things. The crow is as big as you get. Yeah, it's definitely usually. the larger size bird. I mean, you don't, you don't mistake that kind of a thing. And if it hits a window, it's definitely, you're going to see a fall. Yeah. Or go through the window. So that, that's odd. So yeah, I'm like, I, I don't know. Was it some sort of, like went to another place like stranger things or something like it's in the upside down now or <laughs> i'd actually like to see something like that yeah how does he yeah. feel how does he feel about that 
I don't know if you heard him. He said it felt pretty creepy. <laughs> Well, and then he immediately mentioned it to you. So it was like, oh, that's yeah. that's of note to say something about this crow that just disappeared. Yeah, it obviously uh, affected him. <laughs> yeah. And see, another one and done. Right, Donald? Like, that's uh, happened so yeah, often. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's just the thing or... Did any of your family members ever, ever talk about, you know, being sensitive or, oh... So, such and such aunt or this grandparent or that grandparent or great grandparent. Oh yeah. They used to talk about ghosts or whatever, whatever it was. Did anything like that ever come up with your family? Not particularly. I mean, the only other person that ever really noticed anything was my middle brother. I think the weird feelings. He never actually, uh, other than the, you know, the feet actually saw anything. Yeah, that was something else I was going to ask, because he experienced the footsteps, and so did you, and then yours graduated to a full-body apparition. Uh, so his was more, he had the footsteps, or the stomping, we should call it stomping instead of footsteps, and then just strange feelings. So he he kind of got the lucky end of that one, huh? Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, the begs the question, what's the difference between you two? I don't know. That is a fair question. I was slightly preemie when I was born and was in the NICU for a little while. So mm. I don't know, something there, you know, pulled at me a little bit or. Were you a call bear? Were you born with a call by chance? Not as far as I know. Dude, I never asked my mom. Yeah, it's totally, but... totally random question. But I mean, the preemie thing might be enough for that as it is. But, you know, you've heard the, the rumors about. Uh, yeah. Was born with a call, right? It might have a little bit more sensitivity or a lot more sensitivity, depending on who you talk to. Yeah, and I don't know if that's why my son might have seen something either, because he was also born early. Really? Had the same. I we'll have to keep an eye on this crow thing. Um, if he sees anything else, I I definitely want to hear about it. Please get in touch with me because that is that's pretty unique, actually. Um, just the, yeah, I will so... definitely let you know. It was just so out of the the blue with the crow thing. It's very cool. Um, I would like to see that. I would not like to experience all the uh, each and everything that you have, though, Donald. Um, if I woke up and saw the lady in the dress, um, I don't think I'd like that. I mean, it's your house. You don't want to be freaked out in your house. It's cool to see a crow not fly into a window or anywhere else, but we well, yeah, don't want to see anything like that. But I do commend you for at least, uh, you know, in a couple of these experiences, you, you seem to, you're like taking note of it. And like in the car situation, you were kind of going, what is your problem? Will you just knock it the hell off. I'm just trying to go to work and do my thing. And it actually listened to you. It sounds like. Well, to some extent. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, as far as you know, thank you so much for, for joining me. And I appreciate your son for allowing the the crow story to get in here. That was quite unique. And I would like to see if anybody else has any experiences as similar to what has been shared. Please get in touch as you guys normally do. Thank you. Uh, but Donald, thank you so much for joining me. It was a pleasure being on. <laughs>